and I'll have this up on Canvas. Okay. So far, we're the same. Water X, stick your clay down. Get your hands wet. Push down on top and on the side to get your clay to stick to the wheel. Cone up. Cone down. Okay. That was way easier than the first one. <laughs> now we're going to center this, but in order to, in order for your plate to have a stable base, you have to center this to be low and wide. Okay. Everything else I've centered for you in other demos has been right about there. Okay. For plates, you're gonna push extra with your fist on top. You can do karate chop here if you want to, okay? But push extra with your fist on top. I'm gonna turn this way for a second so you can kinda see where I'm pushing and so this camera can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna push down a lot with my right hand and slowly start moving my left hand away. So pushing in the middle. Now, if you don't have large hands, it's hard to be able to push on this whole surface at the same time. So I start in the middle and I kind of move my right hand towards the edge where my left hand is. Okay? That's an air bubble, by the way. That means I didn't do a good job wedging. Okay? Centered to be low and wide. So whatever shape you're centering to is going to determine what you can make. So if you are making a tall vase, if one of you uh, is determined enough to try to make your 10 inch vase on the wheel, and keep in mind throwing 10 inches tall on the wheel is something that only like four or five students in the program can do. Uh, if you are determined to become part of that group, uh, you center a piece to be tall and skinny because that gives you most of your height there. That makes it so that your poles don't have to be as dramatic. Okay? If you're making something short, like a plate, you center it to be short so that you don't have to squash it and stretch it quite so much once you already have it open. Okay? All right. When you open something like this, remember you still only want to have a quarter of an inch at the bottom. But if I were to push in like I normally do, like this, Okay, and then oh, opening it wide, this is the part that gets difficult. I have a lot of space to cover between here and here in order to get it open where I need it to. I would recommend using a sponge, the sea sponge that should be in the buckets that I don't, I see like five of them, sweet. Uh, those work best for this. I'm gonna use the elephant ear because that's what I got. And I'm gonna slow my wheel down just a little bit. Left hand stays on the side, right hand, push the sponge into the middle, and I'm gonna press into my left hand, which is holding still so that I don't push my whole thing off center. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, one other thing that I want you to look at at this stage is that my opening here is just barely deeper than where I open to here, and I want that to be even. So it's okay if you push over here close to your wall and go back the other direction. Just loosen up your pressure as you get closer to the middle, because if you open this too far, you're just gonna cut a hole in it when you go to cut it off. Okay, so open wide. Here's a new step. You're gonna take your blue rib, okay? And now, remember how we use the 90 degree angle for some things? Or wait, that's level two. We use this to make lids. But if you've ever used this to like do your pre-trim, we're actually gonna use the more rounded edge pointing at the middle of your piece. I'm gonna start in the middle with that and push down and drag towards 
the right. Do not drag towards the left on this stage. If you start over here and go this way, it's gonna gouge your piece and ruin the whole thing, okay? Why do I only work from the center moving right? Say it louder. Nope. Yeah. It's the way the wheel is spinning. If I'm moving over here, this clay is spinning into the tool, right? If I'm over here, with the direction that I'm holding the rib, like this, the clay is spinning underneath and away from the tool. Does that make sense? So it'd be like, uh, if I were to have a stick and I drag it this way behind me, it's gonna be fine. If I hold it the same angle and try to push it away from me, I'm gonna wind up with a stick in my belly button eventually, right? Same kind. Of. It's like shovel in the driveway, anybody else? You're shoveling, and then the shovel gets stuck in one of those driveway lines, and it knocks the wind out of you, and then you throw the shovel across the street, and the neighbor's like, thanks for the shovel. Anybody else? All right. Just me. All right, so now we have it open. And now we're going to pull. Your pull does not have to be quite as drastic here, because you don't have a whole lot of clay to move over here. Okay, so I'm going to pull, slow your wheel down just a little bit, pressure into the bottom. You can see where I'm pushing on the inside here with this finger. Push, slowly lift, let go gently as you get closer to the top. push in at the bottom. Sometimes it helps if you push the wheel head first and then into the bottom, that'll help you avoid some of that tree trunk of clay. And you're like, tree trunk? What is he talking about? This stuff down here that we're gonna have to trim off anyway. If you push into the wheel head first, it helps avoid some of that. Okay, all right. So we pulled, typically in this case, we would go to shape immediately, but we're not. We're going to do our undercut and our pre-trim first, because once we fold these walls down, we're not gonna be able to get it. There's your undercut. There's your pre-trim. Then we're gonna lay these walls. Actually, I'm gonna cut off just a little bit of the rim do that now before we fold the walls down. It just makes your life easier. I'm gonna round off that edge. All right, now laying the walls down. I'm going to put my left hand on the side like this. My right hand, I'm gonna push flat fingered onto this wall, pressure down. And as I do that, I kind of turn my left hand this way and I'm pushing the wall into that hand. Okay, and let go gently. All right, take your sponge. Clean up edges and small details. You got to play. Okay, now if you are measuring on where to put your mug, because your mug has to fit in this, you're going to use a set of these. These are called lid calipers, but they're it's for measuring stuff like this. We're going to use the red side on your plate, which means, or not the red side, the whole thing's red. Come on, Mr. T. We're going to use this side, that kind of looks like alligator teeth. Nom, 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 nom. To measure the bottom of your mug. If I could pick it up, okay? So we're gonna use this to measure the bottom of your mug. 
and the width after your mug has been trimmed is when you will do all of this. Okay, but I measure the bottom of my mug and how wide that is. Sorry, it's hard to do this green. So I've measured how wide that is, which is this wide. And then we're gonna switch to the other side, this side that looked like uh, duck lips. And I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna line it up in the middle of my plate and gently set it down to make an indent for where my mug is gonna go, okay? Now, you wouldn't do this step until your mug has been trimmed and your plate is the same. So like, you can trim both at the same time, make, your, make them at the same time, and then trim them both at the same time. After you've trimmed your mug and your plate, you measure it, do this on the top of the plate. And the reason we do that is because we want them to shrink at the same rate. Right now I have this little space that my mug will fit into, okay? But if I'm gonna trim that and both of these are gonna shrink, it's no longer going to fit. You just took a measurement that's not gonna work out for you. Okay, I'm gonna take this tool and press down in that little groove I just made to make that just a little bit deeper so that your mug stays put. Okay. That's all you got. You don't have to do this whole circle thing if you're just making a plate. If it's a mug that has to fit on top of it or a cup and saucer, again, you don't do this until you're trimming, but I'm showing you just for the sake of adding that process. We will trim next week. Are there any questions about plates? Okay, there's a million and a half videos on how to make a plate on the YouTubes. Uh, this is just going to be another one of those. So watch other people make them. This is one style of plate. If you go to Soft Earth Ceramics on Instagram, uh, she has a whole different style of plate, whole different style. Uh, and they're actually kind of cool, so check them out. Good to go. Project number one officially starts on Monday, so please make sure you have a plan. What project are you starting with? How are you going to make it? And that project is due January 31st. Happy Friday, everybody.